But we look forward to your commentary on the subject. Let's start uh, with uh, with Troy Tulowitzki. Uh, what are they to do? I mean, here you have a player uh, who has uh, not played for the team, essentially, for almost two full seasons. He's got a large contract still to come. You would hope that he would come to camp next year and he would want to do everything possible to help this team out, play another position, uh, mentor some of the young shortstops. But but this is what you're getting right now. Are you, you surprised at what you're hearing? Not really. Uh, I think this is uh, his personality to and and professional pride. Uh, when and on some level, there's nothing wrong with that. That's this is what he expects and demands of himself, and he believes he can still play the position. And, and I think that's uh, that's great uh, on that level. Uh, I think that there has to be a, a realism as part of this as well. And, and Guriel is at least in the near term the future of the organization at this particular position, and, and then you look to the future, and um, is, is Bichette potentially a, a player there, obviously, at uh, that position in the future, perhaps, as well. So, um, to your point, uh, th- there is that mentorship aspect of the game, and, and I think all the Jays have to have to do there is just is see what they have next year in camp. They're not... They're, I think they're they're comfortable enough, and obviously it's just now been three games since Guriel came back from the DL um, to, to see how. You know, of course, that was a frightening injury, and hopefully there's no long-term ramifications for, for Lourdes uh, with what happened there. Um, I think they're just now in the, in the process of seeing what they've got with, with with Guriel, and if he comes to camp in the spring and wins the job, he wins the job, and, and then I think you have to decide then to your to, to Tulo's point, what do you do with Tulo if 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 Guriel wins the job, is is Tulo truly going home as he says? Is he gonna is he comfortable uh, uh, having a having a backup role? It sounds like right now the answer to that is no. So it, it really uh, it's it puts the Jays in a unique situation. But they've they've got many many decisions to make between now and the end of spring training when they've got to decide on who their opening day shortstop is going to be. They, they've got, frankly, more pressing things on their mind, and, and I think that too low, I think that situation will, re, will resolve itself based on just simply his health, how he looks, and uh, I think if he plays well enough in spring training to, to, to merit being the everyday shortstop, that's great, and if he doesn't, I'm sure the Jays will uh, figure out the best course of action whenever that comes around. John Morosi, our guest, MLB, Fox Sports, uh, MLB.com, Fox Sports as well, and MLB Network. Uh, do you look at, at Tulowitzki and say, it, not only, like you said, th- this sort of speaks to his personality, he is stubborn, he is thought to be a leader, he is outspoken, he got here and, and instantly was he was a good veteran presence in the Jays' clubhouse, but at the same time, like that's, I agree with you, I, I want to hear him say, I want that job. That's my spot. That's the only place I've ever played. Shortstops are particularly prideful. Derek Jeter wasn't going to move for Alex Rodriguez. It was A-Rod that had to move when A-Rod probably was going to be the better defensive player for, for the first half decade he was there. But uh, but it's the it's the take my ball and go home. It's not his ball to take and go home, and especially not, with John, with a lack of, of productivity. His OPS is 150 points less as a J than it was for the previous decade as a Rocky. Like, that still means something. And and I, I don't blame him for the pride thing, but it's not... If Russell Martin said that, then we've got a house on fire. If Russell Martin said, hey, I'm the catcher, and uh, Danny Jansen, he's going to have to wait, and if I don't get to catch, Russell Martin's obviously... He's almost excited to play other spots and prolong his career. That's a very good point. And, and again, it, it's it's... I, I, I take this two ways. Number one, again, I, I think that there's a professional pride as part of it. Number two, it is a little glib to to say this when you haven't played in a year and a half. I mean, that's, it, that, there's a lot. Uh, it takes a lot of uh, a, a lot of uh, self confidence, shall we say, to make that statement when you haven't played in in, in that amount of time. Uh, so I, I think. Obviously, there are a lot of veteran players that that have respect for Tulo in that clubhouse, and and it'll be up to the Jays if they believe that that leadership is is worth uh, whatever complications there may arise uh, in, regarding playing time. We don't know, for example, who who the manager of this team is going to be. I think that's going to be a big piece of this equation as well. If if uh, Next year's manager, whether it's John Gibbons or somebody else, if they they want Tulo's 
leadership in there and uh, understanding how many games he's able to play um, and what his production is like, I, I think that uh, that will get resolved. If, if, if he doesn't – if he's not a key part of this team from the standpoint of the way that he is uh, both on and off the field, this to me, guys, we're reaching a time in the Jays, if you want to call it a rebuild or retool, you know, Tulo was not somebody that the current front office acquired. And and they're reaching the point where, okay, he has $34 million left on his deal, um, and and obviously it's still an option for, for 2021 as well, so, even, so I guess 38. Um, if if he's starting to be counterproductive, either in either in clubhouse dynamics or lineup maneuverability, or simply the roster spot that he's that he's occupying right now, if that if he, if he becomes counterproductive, then then I think it's it's reasonable to assume the Jays would be able to move on from him. He's not he is not someone that Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins acquired or said was going to be a big part of their future. He was an Alex Anthopoulos acquisition and I think that we're far enough away from, from Alex's departure and far enough uh, and close enough I suppose to the end of Tulo's contract that that uh, moving on from him whether it's a, a outright releasing him or trading him whatever you would do uh, I, I think that would have to be palatable to ownership at a time when this is a team that just simply has to get a look at who the next who the next group of players on the next great Jays team are going to be, and given how far we may, we may be from that and and the positional depth of shortstop, I have a hard time thinking that Tulo is going to be the shortstop on the Jays' next playoff team.